Okay, and so uh, just as a, um, a reminder, we are in the platform stream, um, moving into our third speaker now. Um, my name's Rebecca McDonald, I'm your MC, and I look after the, uh, uh, basically the, the, the people operations um, for our core business operations team in Deloitte. Uh, so I'd now like to introduce Vishal Garawala. Vishal joins us from Singapore. He is the CTO for Asia Pacific, Japan and Greater China with Suze Software. Uh, Vishal enjoys helping enterprises traverse their digital transformation journey using open source technology and platforms. Uh, he's also an avid traveler uh, and has visited uh, over 70 cities and 30 countries. And uh, when permitted, he loves to capture his adventures on a DJI drone. Just checking, it sounds like we have a little bit of feedback here. Um, so just want to make sure how uh, can people hear that okay? Or is it just jump into the chat and let us know? Is that sounding better? There's still a bit of feedback. Okay, that's sounding better. Okay, uh, so. Uh, Thanks so much, Vishal. As, as a highly sought after speaker, we're, we're really thrilled to have you this afternoon. Uh, and he's going to be presenting on building an agile foundation for your enterprise APIs with Suze Rancher and Kubernetes. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And a very good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to everyone who is attending this fantastic uh, conference. Uh, I've really enjoyed some of the previous sessions that uh, I have had a chance to view yesterday as well as today. So it's, it's fantastic. And, um, and I'm very excited to spend the next, you know, 20 odd minutes to talk to you about, uh, you know, how enterprises can build an agile foundation for their enterprise APIs with SUSE Rancher and, you know, Kubernetes. So apart from the quick introduction that, uh, you know, Rebecca kindly provided, I wanted to share a bit more. I've been in this space uh, of APIs for, for quite a while, and I've worked in a lot of companies in the past, companies such as IBM, companies like, you know, Red Hat, uh, and also in my, in my early years uh, with the public sector. And I had a lot of uh, opportunities to work with a lot of, you know, uh, early API related technologies from the days of SOAP, XML, uh, as well as to modern REST-based APIs. Uh, so very, very passionate about this topic. And let me just uh, quickly start off today's presentation uh, and talk about you know, the history of APIs. Now, while API, the term, it, it, it has been flying a, a, around quite a bit uh, over the past, you know, I would say decade, but it, they have been uh, technically around for a very long time, uh, you know, albeit in different shapes and forms. Now, if we look at the, you know, from 1960 to 1980s, when we talk about mainframes and mini computers, uh, APIs enable distributed transaction processing outside of the organization so that, you know, things like ATMs uh, that were invented back then were able to uh, enable things like when you swipe a credit card at a point of sale, uh, you know, you were able to have such things keep possible. So that enabled much greater facilitation of how you put your cash in the hands of consumers and enable them to make purchases more quickly. Uh, and that created a lot of revenue opportunity for your banking retailers, as well as your B2C organization. A classic example of API economy in action. Then if you fast forward, right, 10 years um, after that to the 90s, it was all about client server and distributed computing and how we bring computing to the front office and empowering all the countless uh, you know, front office uh, use cases. And during this time, SQL became a standard. It became a very common API for enabling your application developers to get access to data. And, and then you also had CORBA and other distributed standards, uh, you know, distributed computing standards uh, that really enable the proliferation of innovation in client server computing. Now, if we fast forward furthermore, let's move to the 2000s, right? And this is the age of internet and World Wide Web. And here we saw the rise of APIs. Now, these were really APIs that were built using XML technologies, SOAP-based web, uh, web services running over HTTP. And we saw a lot of uh, you know, new uh, revenue models being created. It enabled B2B over the internet, as well as the rise in e-commerce. Uh, and that was predominantly uh, due to you know websites such as eBay and Amazon. Then 
let's just move to the you know a decade ago 2010 and onwards this is the age the dawn of social mobile analytics big data public cloud and this is where we really saw we started seeing the emergence of new startups uh, and and these are startups such as uber A airbnb and they have late, they later went on to become poster childs for digital transformation now we all know that companies like uber and airbnb heavily rely on apis to provide differentiated value to their customers. And today, when we talk about today, right, today, 2020, we are really talking about APIs uh, in, in a whole new context. We are talking about APIs that can help you power your sensors. Uh, APIs are driving industry initiatives in banking, for example, open banking, PSD2. In telco, we have PM forum APIs. And we're also looking at APIs for constrained resource environments, age environments. Uh, how uh, APIs can power those type of use cases. So you can see that APIs are not new. Uh, however, one thing is very, very clear, and that is that they have evolved progressively over the decades. Uh, and so let's look at some of the technology trends of today and see how APIs will continue to evolve uh, in, over the next couple of years. Now, one thing that is very, very uh, certain that is going to change a lot of things is the adoption, the rapid adoption of cloud and containers. Uh, and what I am really seeing in the market out there is that customers today have a very, very clear adoption plan for using cloud and adopting a hybrid cloud architecture uh, and incorporating multi-cloud as part of their strategy. And I mean, I have some data points here from Flexera, from their survey, which very, very clearly highlights that today, Hybrid cloud is a norm. Public cloud, multi-cloud, it's also something that is uh, at the top of the uh, agendas of a lot of the uh, you know companies, uh, a lot of the multinationals. Uh, and we know why all of them are embracing that right? for benefits such as cost effectiveness, flexibility, resilience, and the avoidance of vendor lock-in. This gives them a lot of digital resilience. And the past one year is just testament to the fact that how cloud really, really enabled customers uh, to still continue their business despite of the you know global lockdown, so this is a major major trend that we see, uh, and this trend also leads me to something else, which which is which is in a way related. When we talk about the API world today, there is this notion uh, and this preference for customers to mix and match their API technologies, their API gateways, uh, as well as their you know, uh, API portals and API management vendors naturally, right? When you look at vendors, they naturally want all of their customers to use their solution exclusively. But we have seen that companies have different, differing reasons why they want to mix and match API management solutions like the gateways or the developer portals. It could be due to a lot of reasons, you know, one, it could be how LOBs in companies are structured. So if you look at, at a bank, your risk management team, will have their own funding uh, compared to the retail banking, compared to the wholesale banking and private banking. And they have their own fundings and they decide what technologies to invest in. And you can technically have multiple API management solutions running in a bank. Or it could be also depending on the gateway that is available to them from their preferred vendor. Their cloud vendor could have a particular gateway and they would want to go with them, right? Uh, and some companies even deliber deliberately choose different solutions because they want to hedge their risk and avoid the situation of having a vendor lock-in. So herein lies the challenge, right? How do you integrate all of these gateways on the cloud with your existing gateways, especially when you consider how different underlying compute infrastructures can be, right? So solutions and strategies will then be required to ensure that despite using different differing API offerings, your customers can still retain the agility and flexibility that API technology uh, are employed uh, to provide. So how do you go about doing that? So this is this is another trend, right? And that is also something as the notion of being able to flexibly deploy your APIs anywhere and everywhere. And this chart that you see here on the screen is uh, a Google Cloud State of the API Economy 2021 report. Uh, and when respondents were asked about future technologies, your future areas of technologies, uh, technology focus and investment, 50% said that there will be an increase in hybrid cloud adoption for API deployment. Uh, and APIs serve a variety of use cases, right, from connecting internal applications to
to also enabling your digital ecosystem strategies. So it is no surprise that many organizations are choosing to leverage a mix of on-premises and cloud infrastructure to host all of the uh, APIs that they will be building. Now, so there are some companies who will obviously need to keep all their data close to home, but there are many companies that are also well positioned uh, to take advantage of the benefits that the cloud can bring. Some of these companies have chosen not to bring up any servers and exist only in the cloud. And some have traditionally stored their data and applications in their own servers, but they also want to have the ability as and when they need, they could scale up using the cloud. And you know, maybe because of different business units or branches, they need to coexist in clouds provided by different vendors. Therefore, we need to have this modern approach, a modern API management approach to cater to all of these differing use cases to support a hybrid deployment uh, for a combination of on-premises and multi-cloud you know, data centers. Now, in short, APIs do not exclusively have to live on-premises or in the cloud. Real-world APIs depend on, uh, on many underlying footprints, and they can technically be running anywhere there is a compute infrastructure. Right. So let us now spend some time also looking at how uh, APIs are driving some new solutions and some uh, new technologies to support some of the trends that we see. Uh, and a lot of these things are not new. A lot of you would have seen this, but I'm presenting presenting this in the in the context of APIs. So there is this notion that everything should exist as a service, and this has really driven. Uh, uh, companies to move away from traditional monolithic architectures to microservices architectures. Now, what this obviously means is that as we break down those applications or we, we build microservices, there's going to be many more services, and that means more API service endpoints. So that is why we today see uh, API management uh, solutions becoming very popular. Uh, in addition to that, inter-service microservice communication which is facilitated by service mesh solutions, that's also becoming very, very popular. Uh, second business need that we see is there's a, ch uh, a change in customer demands. Uh, customers want everything to be done yesterday. And that is why we see the move, the, the rapid move from waterfall to agile to DevOps and CI CD based uh, solutions so that customers can increase the deployment frequency and reduce the duration from ideation to production. Uh, we also see uh, a, a great need for scalability, scalable solutions. And scalability today, it's not just about how your APIs can be uh, able to handle more requests uh, when you have seasonal surges. It's also the ability for you to scale to another infrastructure, to another region, and could be in another geo on the cloud or on the edge. Now, this will obviously present a different type of a challenge. That is, when you have such a distributed and heterogeneous architecture, how are you going to manage it? How are you going to manage it centrally? So we need new solutions to, to, to cater to this type of a challenge. And finally, the final need around having agility and interoperability, and that is driving, that is really driving the move from bare metal solutions to VMs and now to containers and, and Kubernetes. But then again, right, you will have a new challenge because when we talk about mixed architectures, APIs residing everywhere, how do you then operate them in a simplified manner. So management becomes a com complexity. And we need to relook at the way that you are able to manage the entire API management stack in a simplified manner using a simplified uh, you know, op op operations you know, uh, types of you know, solutions or, or tooling. So these are some of the you know, different business needs and how these business needs have created new architectural changes, new challenges, and also new solutions. What is really, really critical here is this red box that you see here. This is an area where today, when we look at the API landscape, we really do not have uh, a, a solution. And I'm not talking about centralized management of APIs. I'm talking about centralized management of the infrastructure that will enable your APIs to run anywhere and everywhere using you know, modern cloud native tooling, cloud native technologies, uh, and likewise do it in a simplified manner from an operations angle. That is something that uh, you know I'll, I'll be talking a bit more uh, very shortly as well. So now that we have understood the needs, the challenges, the solutions, let's just paint out the entire cloud native ecosystem for your enterprise APIs. And I'd like to start off all the way from the bottom by talking about your computer infrastructure. 
your compute infrastructure needs to provide compute anywhere type of and uh, capability, which means be it your data center, be it any of your major cloud providers or your edge environments, your applications that you are building, your cloud native applications should be able to rely uh, and leverage on, on this infrastructures very, very easily. And what is really supporting that, you know, from a standardization and from an IT ops angle, it's basically Kubernetes that provides you all of the abstraction so that you do not have to worry about your underlying infrastructure. And Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, promise is very simple. Once you have deployed, uh, created a container that can run on a CNCF certified Kubernetes, you can literally run that container, that containerized microservice anywhere Kubernetes runs from your data center to the core, to the cloud, to the edge. Uh, and, and that is really, really, you know, you know beautiful. Uh, and on top of Kubernetes, you obviously are going to build a lot of your microservices. And this is where service mesh has become very, very popular. All the inter-service, you know, east-west type of communications that happen uh, within microservices, uh, uh, across all the microservices, that is really the uh, outsource to your service mesh. And we have some uh, very popular solutions out there. Istio is very, very popular. We also have LinkedIn. Now, on top of service mesh, you know, once you have built all of your microservices and the next step you want to now, you know, API enable them, this is where you have the API management, uh, you know, domain that will provide you all the connectivity and governance uh, from rate, uh, from metering to throttling through, you know, providing with a developer, API developer portal, also access management, you know, the entire lifecycle management for APIs. And I don't need to talk more about this. We have seen some fantastic presentations by a lot of you know cool vendors on on what they are doing in the API management space, and and then you know once your APIs are built, you can then build your end applications, your digital services that can be using one or more of these APIs, uh, providing this digital service uh, to the digital channels. This could be your customers, your partners. It could even be other applications within your enterprise, or it could be some mobile applications that needs to use this. Now, this is the entire, uh, you know, ecosystem of APIs. But one thing I want to point out here, I'm talking about cloud native ecosystem, which means in this whole diagram here, what is very, very central is Kubernetes. We are now talking about how to build your entire foundation so that it is leveraging Kubernetes. Because if you want to run your APIs anywhere, Kubernetes helps you do that. It was built, designed to do that uh, because Kubernetes is available everywhere today. So how do you then look at the entire landscape from the vantage point of, of Kubernetes? So in order to dig a bit further, I want to now spend a bit more time to talk about the stages of cloud native api development and you know you might have seen different variations of this but here my key point here is apis in the context of cloud native so first step obviously is you developing your api and this is as simple as implementing your rest apis based on your preferred programming language that could be java javascript go node.js uh, so on and so forth and then you will containerize your apis right that is step one. Step two is you're going to deploy your API. You're going to deploy your API as a containers, containerized microservice on your preferred Kubernetes distribution. Step number three is that you will then manage your APIs. Uh, this is the API management piece. So how do you do security, access control, rate limiting, analytics, and so on and so forth with, a, with an API management platform? Once you have done that, you're going to publish it to an API developer portal so that you know, external as well as internal consumers of your APIs will be able to access all of the API documentation and basically discover your APIs. And the last part is, you know, finally, how do you consume it? How do you then deploy all of your managed APIs on an API gateway that can be invoked by your third party applications, uh, you know, your customers and your partner applications, uh, how they can access your APIs through this API gateway. Now, if you look at this entire uh, you know, sets of stages, one thing becomes very apparent. And that is that from a cloud native angle, it's going to be driven very much by containers and Kubernetes. Kubernetes is across the stack, right? From API deployment to management, to publishing, to consumption. All of your solutions, be it your gateways, your ingress controllers, your de de uh, you know, the developer portal, they will need an underlying infrastructure 
you know, based on Kubernetes, if they are going to be effectively uh, running on all footprints everywhere and have the scalability that Kubernetes provides you with. Right now, herein uh, lies a, another big challenge. Right, when you talk about Kubernetes everywhere, what is a big challenge? You can have Kubernetes from different vendors, like I talked about the mix and match scenario. You can have Kubernetes dif of different versions, uh, and you can have Kubernetes that is running on premises, on the cloud, on the edge. How do you manage? So this. This is a key thing that we need to address. If you want to truly build an agile foundation for your APIs, you need to address this entire management piece for your Kubernetes layer. Because until and unless you are able to do that, all the other capabilities that you get on top of it through your, your, your gateways, through your API management solutions, uh, it will you will not be able to reap the benefits because the core is still uh, not... Uh, being able to provide a lot of these capabilities in a centralized manner. In an ideal world, you should be able to perform all of this management of Kubernetes in a centralized manner from a single pane of glass, right? So let me show this in a pictorial manner, what, uh, what this will really mean. So think about an enterprise, right? They have a data center and they have a lot of this, uh, you see cubes, right? These cubes could be their microservice applications it could be your cloud native API gateways, your ingress controllers. It could be your developer portal and so on and so forth. And you want to adopt a hybrid cloud. Uh, you want to adopt an architecture that relies on hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, as well as age. So what do you do? Well, you decide to uh, run it on Kubernetes. And we all know that there are different distributions of Kubernetes. You have uh, on-premises distributions. You have AKS, EKS, GKE provided by the cloud providers. You also have versions of Kubernetes that are specifically designed for age environments, resource constrained and environments. So if you look at a vendor like SUSE, SUSE has something called Rancher Kubernetes uh, uh, K3S. It's Kubernetes designed for the age. Now, what you then do is, all right, let's deploy all of our gateways uh, you know, all over the place, right? On the cloud, on the age, and so on and so forth. This is where things become challenging. How do you do, how do you manage? Right. And what is even more challenging is when we talk about management, it's not just about monitoring. It's also about how do you uh, manage the nodes? How do you manage your clusters? How do you spin up new clusters, spin down new clusters? And think about it. If you're using AWS, GCP and Microsoft Azure, you need a lot of skilled resources. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a way to view and manage your entire heterogeneous infrastructure and manage them in a singular manner? Well, here is the good news. There is indeed a way, uh, you know, to do that. And what we, uh, how we do that is by using the solution from SUSE Rancher, uh, from SUSE, which is basically SUSE Rancher, right? So this is, uh, what is Rancher? Basically, it's our enterprise-grade uh, Kubernetes management platform. And it will allow your IT operations team to view, manage, and secure all of their existing Kubernetes clusters uh, in a singular, singular manner no matter where those clusters are residing. So now you can easily leverage your, your entire hybrid uh, multi-cloud and age environments seamlessly without having to rely on deep expertise for your various cloud provider technologies. So we support full lifecycle management, and by the way, for AKS, EKS, and GKE. What does that mean? It means that you can perform node management, auto-scaling, uh, from a single pane of glass, including importing, provisioning, upgrading, configuring, and securing your clusters across all of the three providers directly using SUSE Ranch's intuitive UI. Now, think about uh, you know, developer happiness, operator happiness, API management, vendor happiness. Now, this is what SUSE Rancher really gives you. And besides that, you'll be also able to apply consistent policy, software updates, security fixes across all your environments and manage it uh, you know, centrally. And this gets especially, you know, important when we are talking about, you know, uh, use cases like age computing, which can have tens or even hundreds of age infrastructures that need to be, you know, regularly updated. So this is really the benefit that uh, SUSE Rancher provides you with for build when you want to build and architect your agile foundation for your, you know, API management use cases. But but the point to note is that SUSE Rancher is not just uh, helping you do that. It's it can be used to basically provide the same cap capabilities to any cloud native application that is running on Kubernetes. And, and that is really, uh, you know, the beauty of, of that. So um, 
this is another slide uh, represented in a different manner. I'll leave it with you. Uh, I've talked about it in my earlier slide, but if you look at the top layer, right, we have SUSE Rancher and we can augment that with API management and you can then have your gateways, your ingress controllers, your developer portal, all running and, and managed by SUSE Rancher centrally. So you have one UI to have visibility over your entire Kubernetes landscape on top of which all your you know various api management solutions um, you know uh, will be running all right let us now uh, you know do a quick uh, you know summary so basically to summarize building an agile foundation for apis first of all you need to ensure you're adopting a cloud native architecture for your api management uh, as part of your API management landscape. You also need to ensure that your APIs will be able to work anywhere, deployed anywhere, run anywhere, anywhere. And also your gateway should be likewise able to be run anywhere, public, private, hybrid, and age environments. And you should also ensure that you need, that you have a way to unif uh, manage everything in a unified manner, you know, from your data center to the cloud, uh, to the age and beyond. And SUSE Rancher, that is a solution that can really help you gain the agility that you need to be successfully to be successful in rolling your enterprise APIs within your enterprise uh, and beyond, right? So uh, I'd also like to talk a bit about SUSE, the company. So SUSE, uh, as a company, we have been uh, around for a long time, 29 years of leadership. And what differentiates us from many companies is we are true open source company. We have been in the open source space for 29 years. Uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise, our flagship product, a lot of you may know that. But, you know, we recently acquired Rancher as well. And today our key and primary focus is cloud native app modernization and helping customers adopt hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, uh, you know, and HD is something we are spending a lot of time uh, today. A lot of customers across the globe, vertical, uh, literally all your vertical industries out there. Uh, and I think that brings me to my end, and I, I think I still have a couple more minutes, but I, I hope you found this uh, session useful. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, Rebecca and, and team, let me know. I'm happy to take them. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right, uh, we, we do have some questions. Um, the first one, in your presentation that you met, you mentioned that uh, we can set up our Kubernetes clusters for our API gateways uh, on the, the public cloud providers. But how do you actually do that? Ah, that's, that's a fantastic question. I, I often get that because, you know, people will always ask that, hey, every cloud provider is different. So how does SUSE do that? Is it, is it true or is it just market architecture? And well, it is true. Uh, and how we do that is that when you look at cloud providers, they themselves will provide you provisioning APIs. So these provisioning APIs encapsulate some of the common things that you want to do, uh, uh, you know, through scripts, right? Uh, like auto scaling your environment on your cloud provider, doing backup, um, doing uh, upgrades. So what we have, what we have done is we have worked with the we have worked with all of the three major cloud providers. And we are using their provisioning APIs. So this is something that is, is a joint work between us and you know Google, Amazon, you know, and Azure. And we are really doing a lot of uh, you know engineering and integrating all of the APIs. And that's why you get that that experience. Whatever you can do uh, with regards to managing Kubernetes, if you are in AWS, Azure, or Microsoft, Azure, uh, or, or Google Cloud, you can now do it using SUSE Range. I, you know, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Vishal. I think so. And um, and uh, another question: uh, Can we use the Rancher Kubernetes distribution with other applications other than the API landscape that you mentioned? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, Rancher is is, is a is a general multi-purpose enterprise Kubernetes uh, management platform. In short, if you are into cloud native, if you are into microservices, if you are into containers, if you are into hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, edge. And you want to have a singular unified way to manage this 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 entire landscape rancher is a right tool for you excellent well i think that brings us to the um in, end of the questions that we've got there vishal thank you very much for your time this afternoon and i do hope that you are back up and traveling again soon thank you very much rebecca <laughs>